All right, everyone, it's Sheila here, here with Sonder of Aft Forever and his project HDK. How are you doing today? Well, hello, Sheila. I'm, I'm doing okay. I, I, actually, I had a very good day today since I received two new He-Man figures, uh, which are, um, you know, they are made totally according to how they were in the past, but a little bit more detailed. And... Um, in December, the first two figures were introduced in America, so I had to order them from America. Wow. But, uh, I received them today, so obviously you can imagine that it's, you know, a party over here. Yeah, happy day for you then. Exactly. New He-Man figures makes for a good day. Exactly. exactly. Wonderful. So, um, about your project, uh, Hate, Death, Kill, or HDK, which, which would you prefer that I call it? Well, it would definitely be HDK. You know, Hate Death Kill was just a working, a working name, and it was really when the project was still a little bit of an over-the-top, um, cynical project. You know, it, it wasn't that serious. So I wanted to 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 just make over-the-top metal and, and just find some words that were that suited that. But um, like I am usually, I was you know. I didn't have the patience to wait for a good name, so I put it on the internet already. And that was, you know, obviously a lot of people knew already that it was called Hey Death Kill, or they thought it would be called like that. So when I would, wanted to change the name, I thought, well, let's just take the first three letters, HDK, because it also sounds cool. And it, and it was, you know, it, it, it forms a certain word game right it's hdk yeah. and uh, uh, and it has you know my project have has to do about you know something that that ha happens when you know when you get older when you experience more what can happen with with your body and with your mind so it's you know it, it has a certain resemblance uh, in it so i thought well that's cool so let's call it hdk all right, it's a very good name, easy to remember. Um, how did the project actually get started? Uh, how long ago was it, and what gave you the idea to start it? Mm, well, to me, um, you know, Art of Forever has always been a band where I can put a lot of work in, you know, a lot of ideas. I always said that <clears throat> that with After Forever, we do exactly what we like to do, and, and that's true, we, we still do it. Um, that's why... I, I had a, you know, I didn't have the feeling that I really wanted to do other stuff, um, but I think three or four years ago, I really started having, you know, these these more extreme ideas that um, that I couldn't put in off forever because then it would be totally, you know, to a different side. You know, we can we I can put extreme ideas into after forever, but it will always have a certain flavor. Otherwise, it wouldn't be after forever anymore and I didn't want to change it that much so I thought let's just you know work on these ideas see what comes out of it and it, it didn't it didn't get a real shape until I think 2006 uh, when you know when I was getting really frustrated with, with a few issues concerning you know the world of music um, that made me really start you know, writing songs in a totally different atmosphere, and that's when the project really started to to become, you know, a real project. As far as the album title, System Overload, uh, how did you come up with that, and what does the artwork symbolize? Actually, uh, a good friend of mine, Felix, uh, he found out uh, what uh, um, he found out the name. Um, it was I was searching for a name that that, that had a certain catchy factor around it but it but it had to do something with a total breakdown you know that 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 was the idea and um, well system overload was exactly you know suited exactly the purpose because that was really what was going on it was the system that is overloaded is you know is the brain is in, in this case my brain it's it's a very personal project and um, and you know it was overloaded there was too much going on uh, and at a certain point your body and your mind can't take that and it's beginning to act really weird and um, the funny thing is i wrote the project before i had the uh, you know the seizure attacks and 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 the real burnout was you know was uh, um, uh, seen by the doctor um, 
but I, was, I already noticed that it was going the wrong way. And that's why I had to write the project, you know, to write all the, <laughs> the frustrations on me. Obviously, it didn't work out that well because I still, you know, it still resulted in a, in a bad thing. But, uh, but that was where the title, that, that is what the title resembles. Uh, how's your health these days? Is everything better and everything's well? It is, but I, I have to say, um, you know, maybe it's Dutch, I don't know, but, but the people over here, especially where I live, are really, how do you say that, um, realistic, not really dreamy people. Uh, I don't know if I, if I, you know, I can't explain that the right way, but we are, we often put the, you know, put the things that can harm our health away and we think, well, you know, we shouldn't, we shouldn't bother, we shouldn't complain, just continue. You know, and that's also a little bit how I was raised. I mean, I'm, I, I always underestimated what, you know, what um, a wrong style of living, and in my case, too much working, can do to your body. So, um, so right now, I see that, you know, when you had an actual burnout, I mean, then. You know, you can't really say that, that everything is totally fine. I can definitely say that I feel well, that I have enough energy and that I'm doing okay. But I notice every time that the things I, ha I could handle before, um, I can't handle that, that good, that well now anymore. You know, There's some, some things have, have changed. I think I've got a lower stress factor or something like that. I don't know how you say that. Um, in the past, I could work all day and, and, and do a, arrange a lot of stuff and have, have a few jobs next, next to each other. That is, diff, that is more difficult right now. So I guess, you know, I guess it's a warning sign. And um, yeah, I'm, I, apart from that, I'm doing really well, but it's just like, you know, you're a little bit of a new person and you have to learn to live with that also. And you know, it does, didn't happen to only to me. A lot of people, you know, find that out on their way to, you know, to grow, being a grown-up, I guess, and uh, I guess I have to be realistic about that. Okay. As far as um, the genre of the project, uh, I know you're very into thrash. Is it f focused like on thrash, or is it all kinds of genres of metal blended together? Well, it's 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 really hard to explain because obviously I've worked a long time on it, and to me it's all really natural. But the the people who heard it yet. It's it's really um, I guess you can you can call it thrash, uh, but it's it has a lot of different metal styles in, in it. It sounds pretty modern. Um, it's 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 extreme. It's got a lot of extremities, but it could be thrash. It could be death metal. It could be uh, uh, progressive metal. There are all kinds of styles um, worked into it. There are some guest musicians, right? Um, I think Arian uh, from Arian is on the album. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's true. That was uh, that was really cool because actually Arian with with this project Arian is one of the reasons that After Forever, you know, started because uh, when Mark was still in the band, Mark Mark and I were listening to Arian a lot of the time. His first album in 1995, the final experiment, was a big. A, a real big influence for us, and um, uh, so well, I kept in touch with Arya a little bit, and he was what was really cool. And um, well, apart from that, Andre Matos, the, the ex singer of Angra, did, did some really cool uh, uh, vocals, and there are some really good guitar players on it. Also, Joost is 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 uh, playing on the album, uh, the, the keyboard player of After Forever. Um, a lot of guest singers and uh, and of course Amanda Somerville who made the project more versatile and certainly more um, uh, more dynamic and more um, how do you say that mature uh, uh, when you look at the lyrics and at the vocal lines.